on your marks. Get set. Hey. Hello there. Good, my cake folk. Back at it again. It's Crimp to see. It's a great British Bake Off podcast. I'm your host, Dennis Taylor 713, joined by the other host, Nick Jew. So I do a lot of my workouts on YouTube, and what was crazy was to see us in my you, things you might be interested in on YouTube. A lot of god dang dog. Check it out, people. We're getting we hitting that algorithm. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. Hit, that, hit that algorithm, people. That's, that's what's up. Uh, it is the quarterfinals. And it is only five bakers left in this tent and only two episodes after this one remaining, which is wild. I've, I've, this is going by like a shot this go around, y'all. But, man, it, it, it has been a delight. But guess what? It worked last week. We'll try it again this week. I'm just going to show you the intro that we normally talk about because I think it's dope. Double checked it. No differences this week. But no deal of UK VO of this week. And I listened to the international U, uh, VO this week. And you know, I feel like they both, I because I took note of that. Yeah. Sometimes Allison did a little VO like during the show. So I don't know if they typically mix it up during yeah. the show. But I was like, oh, I hear her sometimes. I think, I, well, and when I say this, I just mean the opening, the introduction. Yeah, okay. That's all I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah during the show, they, they I feel like they do back and forth between segments. So I think they just switch back and forth. I like it. I like yeah. that the, the, they just get shared like that. But. Here, here's the bit. You get to see it. I just get to push play on it. Hold on, I gotta open up the video wall. <laughs> just a little further down, I thought. Boom, wow. Hi, welcome to the show. It's 70s week. I've had my hair done, especially in the 70s style. Now, it is 70s week, but it's a very serious, sophisticated show. So we won't be doing any of those cliches like disco balls, apart from Paul Hollywood's. And we certainly won't be doing lava lamps. As I said, this is a serious affair. Yeah! Welcome to the Great British Baking Show. Ride the pony, baby! Ride the pony! That does look quite fun. Give us a go. (laughs) (laughs) I don't feel like explaining it would have did it any justice. (laughs) Also, that's me listening to it in headphones, and you can hear off to the left, slowly but surely. I was like, what the fuck is going on in my head? <laughs> the first time Allison busts her ass. In this oh my God, the fact that this happens twice, man. She wild. Paul was just talking about her on the extra slice. We, we'll talk about the extra slice. Like, I think y'all, I feel like y'all got to need, you need to be watching extra slice in, 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 in your life. That shit was a real, well, or maybe, maybe just this one because Paul was on it, which is a little bonus. Holy smoke, that was a good intro. <laughs> I was like, it's right. so stupid. Because I saw the excerpt of her falling on TikTok, like in the episode. So when yeah. I saw that, I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I just love her. So I would love to have drinks with Allison. Because like, when I fall, the first thing I'm doing is laughing. If you yeah. fail, the first thing I'm going to do is laugh. I'm going to be laid out on the ground, <laughs> you know, me bleeding cracking up laughing <laughs> she's the best and i love your little ponytail this week uh-huh. so, mm-hmm. fucking me some allison mm-hmm. uh most weeks i didn't do it last week but most weeks we have a little little side venture here i'm basically i'm about to hit you with a lot look this is one of the ones i'm just gonna tell you listeners and i i, I dig it i love that y'all listen just watch it it's a lot of video that's go around i'm sorry it yeah just is. but we have a new segment Oh, Bakes Make the World Go Round. It has this lovely little intro that I'm going to click on right now. 
Bakers make the world go round. And this week's Bakers Makes the World Go Round is the announcement that the Great American Baking Show Holiday Edition is right around the bend, y'all. And we got a whole trailer. So I figured we just watch the trailer together. It's right here. I'm going to click another button. Well, say no, just above by one. And you're going to get to watch the trailer. You can watch it with us. You can go watch it on your own. It's on YouTube, so forth and so on. It's a good time. My man Frank sent us an article about it. Thank you for that, Frank. But here is the actual trailer. And I think it's pretty, pretty delightful. Can I bake? <laughs> you know, I just want to have some fun and talk a lot of trash. Oh, this is iconic. That looks like, just like it does on TV. The great thing about American celebrities is they're there to enjoy themselves. <laughs> Welcome to the tent for our holiday special. On, On your, your marks, marks get, get set, set, bake! I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> it's a science to this. Is it pecans or pecans? Nailed it. I have been practicing. At the end of the day, I'm not here to bake friends. I'm making a gluten-free carrot roll with oh, cream dear. cheese filling. Oh, no. Well, already, he, he's walking away. Well, I'm stunned. Stunned which way? That's delicious. <laughs> Aww. Oh. I think it's really coming together nicely. The house broke. And by that, I mean not at all. Oh, God. This sucks. We're going to do what we call an oopsie fix, where we sort of go like this. Well, why do you keep breaking snowmen? Look at that. <laughs> that one is like a stocking stuffer. You didn't ask for it, but you got it anyway. <laughs> I'm not winning this one, I'll tell you right now. Does anybody have a blowtorch? I'll never bake again. That was it. I'm broken. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle. You don't have time for this nonsense. <laughs> so I'm like vaguely familiar with everybody. I know a couple of people. Who yeah. is that? Susie? Susie? It's me. I didn't know either. Good. Thank you. Not alone. Okay. Man. He's like, I'm sorry, sorry to this man. Hey, why they, how, I hope they're crazy famous. <laughs> the best thing about that Kiki Palmer, sorry to this man, is it was literally Dick Cheney. <laughs> she was like, sorry to that man. Uh, an American actress, comedian, producer, and writer. She's best known for a role as Susie Green on Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's why I don't know her. I don't watch Curb either. I yeah. know, I know everybody loves some Curb. Right. Yeah, at this point, it feels so intimidating to try to catch up. And then everyone's like, oh, no, you could just jump right in. Yeah, hello, have we met? I can't just jump right in. I, I mean, I could, right but I'm, just, I'm just not going to feel right about it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's chaos. Um, I, I, I love Bake Off, people. It's clear. So that's just, it just is what it is. So some more Bake Off, please and thank you. Yes, Americans doing the same thing. Also, I mean, I mean, they maybe they just showed us the, the good looking bakes, but they didn't look, bad. look too bad. Nothing looked terrible. I was like, okay, I see y'all out here baking. Let me tap myself down. That's what I think. I'm, I think my my I think I'm just turned up too damn loud. So last week I didn't. Know, I noticed like moments of feedback, but on the whole, it wasn't like it used to be. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna try that deck because that, that bad boy was up at a hundred. So let's put it down to seventy and uh, see if that helps the cause. And oh. I'm on like fifty, so you don't hear you from my headphones. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to figure out what is uh what. Let me hear him turn down on this too. That turned me up. The other way turned me down. We'll, we'll see how that worked. I sound okay? Yeah. No, oh, but now I sound the echo is way worse in my ears. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. So maybe I'll leave that be. <laughs> 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 Our remaining beggars in the tent is go around. Christian, Dylan, Georgie, Jill, and Illy Ying. Uh quarterfinals, which means you kind of gotta shoot lights out this week. And uh just didn't work out that way for a lot of people. So it just is what it is. It actually, I'm not saying it was a bad week for, well, I mean, and one big in particular had a worse week than others, but a couple of people was like, mm, okay, mm -hmm. here we are. We we are running up against the uh, the edge of our uh, skill set here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this uh, plays out. And everyone kind of had on a 70s type outfit, but my girl Jill, who I love to the end of the earth, was just like, I'm going to wear what I'm aware. 
I don't give a damn what y'all got up. <laughs> so we 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 talked about last week. We, I put a, a a reel up recently just with with the whole point being we were discussing Jill, and I go today to look at uh to I always because I keep checking to see how it's doing because like it's okay but I want to. I want to do better. Yeah. And who do I say he liked it but Jill herself? And I was like, that'll do. I the rest of it now is just water. Right. Did you tag her or did she just find I did it? tag her? I did oh, tag okay. her. Awesome. So, I'm glad yeah, she watched yeah. it. It was a, a the clip where I was saying I, Prue would have to see me for calling <laughs> me useless. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great clip oh and God. I think it worked out well yeah so. I was like I hope she understands my black American humor <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, get us ready and set it off yeah our signature challenge is profiteroles the judges are looking for a stack of at least 30 profiteroles they can use any style or filling but the flavors have to be 1970s uh, okay, they have two hours and 30 minutes. That's my favorite one. <laughs> I like that track the most. I kind of like mm -hmm. how the cupcake works. It's kind of my favorite one. I have no idea why they kept just saying stacks of profiteroles when that shit, like that shit don't have a name. It's called a croquembouche. It exists as such. They had croquembouches in the past and have called them croquembouche. Don't they call called them. it a croquembouche on this episode when they were talking about Christian. So, so why are we saying a stack of profiteroles? It was I felt like I was being gaslit. I'm like, ain't that just a croquembouche? It is just a Krogan boot, but <laughs> let's get into it because I don't think we've had uh, uh, cream uh, cream puff this go around. I got a, a little bit of data for you guys. A profiterole, en français, chou à la crème, is uh, a cream puff. If you <laughs> live in America, <laughs> it's a ball of shoe pastries usually, usually filled with whipped cream, custard cream, pastry cream, and or ice cream. Uh, pata choux, which is what the dough is made out of, delicate pastry dough. Instead of using a raisin agent, the shoe's high moisture content creates steam, and the water in the in the dough evaporates when baked, and that's what puffs it up. And boom, that's how you get the pastry puffs. Science facts. <laughs> it's the best. I'm telling you, it's why I love baking so much. It's and why I can't do it. Just dorky enough, you know. So I know <laughs> you you are an artistic ass. You this it's the it's directions we all travel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just we're on different sides of the lunchroom. Science and logic. Oh, no, I always oh, sat with nerd. the. I always sat with the, with the, with the with the, uh, with, the, with the with the drama type people. I took I drama class. Cutting that's, school. I that's why I had to keep it. Oh, see, you was out this crease, and me. I, I think I cut school like twice, maybe three times oh. my entire existence. It's like out of college and fuck that all up. <laughs> well, I, would, I would not be at the school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christian's up top. I got shoe, shoe babe, and you know I love a good title. Adorbs. <laughs> Chris gonna be based on a black force gate. Uh, it's gonna be chocolate profiter profiteroles filled with chocolate namalaka and Kirsch cherry jam. Uh, he said a lot of words. <laughs> I didn't know what any of them were. I was like, oh, you, that sounds well, interesting. What? <laughs> Namalaga, kind of newish in the realm of pastry. Hmm. So kind of kind of new to the game. Namalaka, which translates as smooth or creamy in Japanese, is basically a velvety, slightly firm style of ganache. It's popular in modern pastry kitchens uh, thanks to its silky smooth texture, which falls somewhere between pastry cream, mousse, and ganache, making it extremely adaptable for various dessert applications. At its core, Namalaka consists of just milk, heavy cream, chocolate and gelatin which adds structure and stability and unlike many pastry creams and chocolate cream mousse recipes namalaka is both egg and gluten free hmm. it's also much easier to make than pastry cream if you have 10 minutes you can whip up some namalaka you don't need to find your thermometer to worry about whether your filling is cooked to the proper consistency making namalaka 
is as as easy a, as as a pouring. Oh, wait, wait. Making Namalaka is as easy as pouring hot milk and gelatin over chocolate, whisking until the mixture is smooth, and letting it firm up in the fridge overnight. Now, clearly, we didn't wait overnight to do this, but I'm going to assume he knew what he was up to with the Namalaking, and he knows what level uh, of chill out it needed. So, it sounds like it would be like the consistency of pudding. I, I think slightly stiffer, but only just, you know what I'm saying? Just to yeah. the other side of that. So, yeah. Namalaka, people. Y'all hip? I'm hip. We all hip now. <laughs> this is our first mention of Kirsch, but I think it, somebody, uh, Georgie used it in her showstopper. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirsch was used, uh, uh, I think, three times over because uh, Kirsch is just a part of Black Forest Ghetto, and Kirsch is a cherry liqueur, if I'm not mistaken. Let's double check on Kirsch. Kirsch. <laughs> you got to spell it right. It's a coding brand if you spell it with an S. Kirsch. K-I-R. Oh, no. Netflix captions were K-E-R-S-C-H or something like that. Mm, hold on, hold on. Sherry Kirsch. And there you go. See, you do that. It's K-I-R-S-C-H. And uh, what is Kirsch? <laughs> Where can you buy it? <laughs> Thanks, Olive Magazine. Uh, no, I don't want your freaking reject. Reject all. I don't want your cookies. Uh, Kirsch is a clear spirit made from distilling sour cherries. It differs from cherry brandy, which is generally brandy infused with cherries, as opposed to being distilled from them. Mainly produced in Germany, Kirsch has an alcohol content, content of about 40, AB, 40% ABV and can be drunk along, mixed into cocktails, and used in desserts such as Black Forest Gato. It's also traditionally used to flavor fondue. <laughs> Word to Kirsch. <laughs> should I get a bottle of Kirsch just to have around? You probably should. <laughs> Might have to look into that. Uh, top five and all of them dial on. It's my man Dylan, and he's going for a sci fi stack of profiteroles. <laughs> it's Croak and Boosh, and I'm calling it Croak and Boosh. Uh, the Star Wars droid inspired Croak and Boosh, but it has a nougatine base and head. And the profiteroles feel, are feel, going to be filled with banana cream, uh, cream pat, but also a little bit of salted caramel, but not too much because he's like, I don't want to put too much because. The whole thing got caramel all over it, and they all work together. Uh, nougatine, I want you to know, it's pretty much just peanut brittle. In this case, they swap out uh, sliced almonds instead of peanuts. So if you know what it looks like, that's what you got. Peanut brittle is nougatine. Nougatine mm-hmm. is peanut brittle. Uh, Georgie is going for a tribute to Freddie. This is the second time Smyrna made a Freddie Mercury situation on, on Bake Off, mm-hmm. and trust, this is a whole lot better than the first one. Uh, it's a standard cooking boost. <laughs> She has just a regular old stack of the, the pyramid st- type stack of, 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 of profiteroles. Uh, her profiteroles are going to be filled with white chocolate and coconut creme pat or dark chocolate and salted caramel creme pat. And like it's decorated with, of course, a, a, a Freddie Mercury, you know, hand in the air, standing with a mic uh, kind of a cutout. And it's got these, what were those on there? Crowns and so forth sprinkled throughout the, the, the stack. It's very, very it looked very cool to me. I, I, yeah. Eileen is going for an old to the 70s afro. Uh, profiteroles that are going to be filled with raspberry compote and chocolate and or and. Okay, and and then we'll get to or. <laughs> filled with raspberry compote and white chocolate creme dip uh, and caramel and hazelnut creme and amaretto diplomat. The entire stack is decorated with these mini sponge fros and isomalt afro silhouettes. I like the look of it. Wish it could have uh, held its uh shape <laughs> just a little longer <laughs> yeah man <laughs> jill's going for a 70s christmas tree she tells a story about how she has her parents uh christmas tree from the 70s still it's one of her most prized possessions which i dig i dig the idea of that i'm a guy who loves a uh, love christmas just eat that shit up so i get down with the get down on that one her profiteroles are going to be filled with chocolate and hazelnut creme pet coated with a red and green crackling. I thought I bought y'all, I got y'all the idea of the recipe for crackling, the notion of crackling, but I don't think I, I, I think I looked it up. I don't think I put it down. You know when they made Mexican wheat, conchas. Mm-hmm. Concha, conchas got crackling Crack. on top of it. Mm-hmm. Same difference. It's just smaller. It's it's basically a thin, if you, a thin uh, biscuit. 
that sits on top of the bacon. Basically, it rises up and kind of melts, and you got a little crispy crunch to it. And mm-hmm. not all the not all the profiteroles have that. Some do, and some don't. And when they do, it's called uh, I think it's like uh, parachu crackling. I think it's literally just all the words come together. If I'm here, I just hit my history right quick. My and mind. that got me to thinking about Dutch crunch, which I did not get when I was in California. Shoe not- all crackling. There yeah, that's okay. what it's called when you, when you have the what's called on. So that is what's popping with. Oh, that's everybody actually. Holy smokes, man! Like I said, twenty five in the cent, y'all. Yeah, it, it, it runs through kind of quick. Uh, Ilyin is up top in the judging. I love the colors, though it's not structurally sound. It was flavor. like leaning, and because we because now we know that they sit there for several hours before the judges come and see them. By the time she had presented it, she had to like lean it up against something. I felt so bad for her. <sighs> Just wasn't working out. <laughs> they love the flavor. The cream and the raspberry are lovely, nice and sharp. The pastry is nice. It's thin and baked through. The hazelnut ones are absolutely delicious. The nut flavor comes through. And it's delicious. Almost tastes like praline because of the mix of the nuts and the caramel that, you know, holds together a uh, croquem bouche. The rolls are large, though. And being filled with that soft cream softens up the structure just enough that everything kind of goes on the lean. And in fact, there she's not the only one who had one that was kind of. <laughs> but the car- the caramel on other people was held it up a little stronger than her. She would she she probably should have hit it with more caramel to kind of secure it a little tighter. But you don't know until you know. Uh, Man, yeah, George is up next. They like the look of it, bit of a lean to it. See what I'm saying? But perfectly stable. They like the coconut white chocolate and the whole almond. She, so she made these coconut. Remember, they're filled with coconut and white chocolate. But she also went ahead and threw a whole almond up there. Can you imagine biting down into a? I feel like that's the wrong textural situation. A piece of bread with some cream and a nut inside. And then a, like you get to a hard ass. And I'm like, I'm glad she gave a heads up because like I would have been like, what the hell is this? <laughs> 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 but. Works be- beautifully well together. The caramel, the caramel is lovely. It works beautifully well with the chocolate on the outside. The flavors are all excellent. Georgia came through. Yeah. Jim, bake looks good, but I think it needs more color. Quite neat. Very hazelnutty. Not wild. <laughs> Again, Prue was on one this week. Not wildly exciting, <laughs> but very confident. Yeah. Simple but effective. All I'm saying, Jill. I wouldn't, I would understand if you asked that lady to square up. I would understand. I'm not condoning violence. I'm just saying I would understand. I'm not fault you. I get it. It's also mm-hmm. saying. Mm-hmm. Christian looks great, very attractive, very even, quite boozy. It works with the cream, though. You know what I'm saying? The booziness they they felt was like, wow, that booze is hitting. It goes, no, nah, no, nah, you gotta make sure you get some of this cream on the outside. And then together it really makes for something t- tasty, I guess. Uh, you pretty much need that cream to beat back the booze is basically what it comes down to. It felt a little skinny. I feel like his little like rendering they did of it was like a nice cylindrical Christmas tree-ish thing, and it looked like we just got like a triangle. Yeah, and and he I ain't, I don't know. It he was weird about it, and he was like, I'm gonna rebake them shit. I'm like, my god, you gotta chill. But then mm-hmm. Dylan Dylan helped him, and I think that oh I always think that's dope. Yeah, T- turns out on the extra slice, Paul is like, I would never, don't ever help nobody. I'm like, what? Paul, it's, a com- it's a competition, but I feel like if you're done and it's not going to be a detriment to your bake, why not help somebody else? You know why it won't be a detriment to, 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 the, to the man who helped them bake? Why don't we talk about that? <laughs> right, right. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, the nougat tea works fantastic. It looks like something you'd find in the window of a department store. Love the salted caramel tone that's right at the top as well as the, with the flavor. The banana comes through beautifully. The shoe is baked very well. Paul likes this thin caramel because you can get it, you can get into the stack, take what you need, and still pretty well support it. What does all that tell y'all? You did a good ass job. It also means Paul, once again, extended the hand, the Hollywood handshake for the, for, for the, for the, for the youngster. He's like, again. I didn't really want to do it, but... He, he, he's like, I can't help but do it at this point. I'm getting tired of having to dap you up. But, sir, shit was fired. My and, only uh, note is it was giving more Star Trek than Star Wars. I feel you on that. I think that blue was very, was very uh, droidy. But yeah. that was the only thing. The shape of it, the whatever. I was like, this is, this is giving me like 
Enterprise. All you can do is go with the vibe and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and not just go ahead and make R2D2. So. Mm-hmm. But it was dope. It was dope yeah, looking. Yeah, that blue yeah. was incredible. And I know that nougat team was busting. Oh, I just wanted a little peach. Just, just, a, little, <laughs> just, a, little, just a little nibble. It's like, hey, come on, y'all. Oh my god! Hey, hey, mighty impressive is how they wrapped that up. They they knew my man came through. Like I said, got dapped up. Seems to me my man should have been Star Baker. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Set us a sale, Nick. What's up next? The next thing is the Technico challenge set by the It Girl of the 1970s, Paul Hollywood. He advised them that they would they will know the bake, but it's all about the textures. He asked them to bake a banoffee pie. The pie should consist of a buttery short crust pastry case filled with perfectly set caramel and banana slices. And the whole thing should be finished off with a beautifully piped Chantilly cream. They have two hours and 30 minutes. But I would have, I would have tried this. I hate the smell of them, <laughs> but Banoffee looks so bomb that mm-hmm. I already talked to Vanessa about what can I do to make this sans banana. Just don't put the bananas in there. Yeah, I feel like then I'm, I'm lax. I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna try what uh, create spinach. Why, why don't you put like a um, vanilla wafer? You ain't wrong. Cause I, cause that's how I have my banana pudding. I don't do, I don't do the banana. My, my mom used to, my, my, used to do it from when I was little. Like, hey man, you know I'm fucking bananas. Did you hook a boil up or something? A little something. If I, do have it, I have to have it immediately before they start getting like slimy or whatever. Oh, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would try this. This I would, I would definitely try this. Banoffee pie is a British dessert pie made from bananas, whipped cream, and a thick caramel sauce made from boiled condensed milk. Or milk jam. I didn't look up milk jam, but we'll assume it's my tell y'all know. Combined either on a buttery biscuit base or made from crumbled biscuits and butter. Banoffee is a portmanteau, combining the words banana and toffee. Credit for the pies. Oh, in- duh. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was like, it's so exotic. It's not French. <laughs> I'm so mad at you. <laughs> Literally. Oh, right? like, oh. <laughs> I'm an American. I don't think caramel and toffee are the same thing. Uh, credit, credit for the pie's invention is claimed by Nigel McKenzie and Ian Dowding, the owner and chef, respectively, of the former Hungry Monk restaurant in Jevington, East Sussex, England. They claim to have created the dessert in 1971, basing it on a San Francisco recipe of for Bloom's toffee pie. Coffee, to- coffee toffee pie, which used milk jam, a soft toffee made by boiling un- an unopened can of condensed milk for several hours. McKenzie and Dowding found that they were unable to perfect the recipe consistently, and after trying various changes, including the addition of apple or mandarin orange, McKenzie suggested banana. Dowding later said that straight away we knew we had got it right. McKenzie suggested the name banoffee pie, and the dish proved so popular with the customers that they, could, that they couldn't take it off the menu. Apple might, might be busting. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm just slight, some thin slices of Granny Smith, you know, just a little tartness to mix with mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I might try my hand at it. If I do, you know what I'm saying? Worry not, I'll send you pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what it is. They they tell them what to do. In this case, they told them even less to do. They basically they said, here's, <laughs> here's what you have. Here's how much of it you have. Make a banoffee pie. And it's like, it seems to be so such a tradition in England at this point. So I'm probably like at the well over 50 year old recipe at that point that it seems to be a no no. A couple of bakers knew what it was as soon as they said the name. And yeah. to be honest, with this caliber of bakers, I don't have a problem with them not getting a recipe at all. Yeah, yeah you don't you, you you don't need it for this. This mm-hmm. is something you probably have made several times recently. Mm-hmm. So 
uh, Christian is going to be up, is up first. They quite like it. It's beautiful. The top is lovely. It's nice and crisp. The caramel, not quite there. It needs to be cooked out a little more. The pastry, though, is really crispy. And overall, the flavor is lovely. Dylan, interesting pipe work. Sort of all over the place, but in a nice way. Uh, a bit of a soggy bottom. Which I, I just don't understand how anybody can have a soggy bottom in this damn tent. It's like, he come on. Star -breaker. <laughs> in my opinion, that's why he couldn't be star breaker. You are. So I'm not fair. I'm, I'm a, we'll, we'll get around to what we got to talk about. Uh, not, it's just not quite good. That's just what it is. That's what the soggy bottom is. The pastry is a bit tough, having been worked a bit too much, but the caramel is perfect. Eileen looks fan, looks like a classic 1970s Benoffi. Sounds good. They, mean, what I mean by sounds good is literally as they put the knife through it, it makes uh, the sound is something pleasing to Paul's ear. And he actually discussed that again on this exercise. You got to watch the exercise. I will try to remember to throw it in the show notes, the, the, the link to it. I go to this site. It's called HD Clump. And it's got a little bit of everything on the job. But I'm, I'm going to direct you right there to that one thing so you don't have to be in these streets. <laughs> uh, the pastry's been overworked. The whole thing is a little clumsy, but tastes delicious. The caramel is perfect. Jim, pastry looks a bit sad. They really owe my girl this week, y'all. Really? Nice. The manager. Nice and neat, though. The caramel, quite dark. It has a, uh, But it has a light texture. The pastry, though, turns out it's undermixed in this case. And the caramel, a bit treacly. It's gone too far. Whereas Christian didn't go far enough. Jill went too damn far. Georgie, they like it. The classic petal of the piping of the, the Chantilly cream on top of it sounds right on the cut. Very crumbly pastry. Lovely, nice flavor on the caramel. Just did it. it all yes, so. And did it. Yeah. Uh, let's rank them now. Whew. In last and technical again. Jill, you messed, up, you messed up with the caramel and its pastry is underworked. Eileen, a bit clumsy and the pastry is a bit overworked. Dylan, pastry a little tough. Christian, really delicious. The caramel need to be taken a little further. Otherwise, it was lovely. And the pastry is excellent. Always the bridesmaid. Number one is mm -hmm. Georgie. Well done. Pastry is nearly perfect. That's all that had to be said. You got mm -hmm. all that rigmarole that you got told to Christian <laughs> on to be told. That's why you were number two, though. Mm -hmm. Yo, caramel. <laughs> She's like, this is like the third time I done came in second. And, and, and I know. I need, I need my man to win a, win a damn technical one time for the, for the mine. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. Yo. But again, Banoffee, y'all, if you look at it, like I said, it's a, it's a lovely little short crust. It's like a thick-ass caramel. It looks so good. So good. And then they ruin it by slicing bananas on top of that shit. Awesome. And Prue at first was like, I don't like Banoffee because it's too sweet. Too sweet. And yeah. I was like, uh, and because I feel like I feel her on that. But if your crust is like nice and buttery, and the the cream is not too too sweet, I just I want one little piece. I just want a piece. And that and that's and so like I said, the, they went with a, a a short crust, so it's more on the buttery side. I guess people actually people use biscuit bases, and I right. think she probably had a biscuit one. There's the sugar, right? Right, because you, if you imagine that with like some crushed up biscoff or whatever, yeah, that would be yeah, entirely far too much. much. Yeah, or absolute fire. One way. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to just a little bit of chocolate somewhere in that. Like, well, that's the thing they sprinkle. You're supposed to you sprinkle coke on top of that of uh, that that chantilly. Yeah, but I would want like a a, a drizzle of like, actual <laughs> chocolate. Come on, look it up, baby. Get a little chocolate sauce. I feel like it definitely that's a cake that, or pie rather that would definitely require a thin slice. Like you can't be going too wide with that shit. Yeah. Oh, oh goodness me. Uh oh, man. oh, you know what it is, Nick. Showstopper. The judges would like them to bake a beautifully decorated gateau with at least two tiers. They would love them to create a showstopper with delicious sponges, feather light fillings, and intricately piped decoration. They have four hours.
in that video is like a little cream and they like torched it a little bit. I want it. <laughs> Torch me up some rain. Hook it up now. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to ring a run through it, y'all. Uh, Eileen's up top here. She's going for a peach Melba Sammy's guy. So it's going to be a two tier cake, eight layers of Genoa sponge filled with peach chantilly cream. Peach and champagne compote and a raspberry compote. The whole thing is to be covered in a white chocolate whipped ganache to add to some structural integrity. Sure would be. <laughs> Christian, lemon, hazelnut, and avocado 70s uh, ghetto. Three-tiered hazelnut genoise filled with avocado curd covered in buttercream. Avocado, A-D-V-O-C-A-A-T, is a traditional Dutch alcoholic beverage made from eggs, sugar, brandy. The rich and creamy drink has a smooth custard-like consistency. The typical alcohol content is generally between 14 and 20% ABV. Its contents may be blend, may, may be a contents may be a blend of egg yolks, aromatic spirits, sugar or honey, brandy, vanilla, and sometimes cream or condensed milk. In this case, an advocate curd is take that, what I just told you about, mixed with a lemon curd, boom. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of Avocat before. It just sounds like uh, 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 eggnog with a little brandy in it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I saw eggnog in the grocery store yesterday and I was like, it's my time. It's time. <laughs> That's exactly the case. I, I did not get any, but I am uh, I'm ready. It's the good kind, too. The good time. They didn't have the rest of the, the cartons out. There's a, we have a, a local uh, uh, dairy farm, uh, Hartzler. Uh huh. And, uh, I believe my bottle. stomach would just like fall out of my booty hole if I drink eggnog. <laughs> I have loved eggnog since I was a itty bitty child. It is I my shit. It. it tastes <laughs> delicious, but I, the way that my stomach is set up currently, and they have like a lactate version, but I feel like I would just be not doing it correctly. Well, I say I I have. Uh, I used to drink this one brand because it was like the fancy brand. And they asked, and they, I don't know, over the years, they didn't, they didn't kind of really got away from what I thought made it dope. And so I pay, I pay the very expensive cost for a Hartzler brand, like $8 a bottle. Nick. It's worth every goddamn time. <laughs> and I, mean, uh, I feel like you could make eggnog though. I don't want to. That's one of the things I'm like, mm, just because like, I feel like they're using better quality eggs and milk than I would have. So yeah. Yeah, so I just get down to get down on that. Uh, let's uh, let's see who we leave off it. Oh, we left off. Oh, wait, look, Jill's up next. She's going for Jeff's Cafe 70s Gato. She explains how she used to go to dance class with her, with her sibling, I don't know, her sister or brother or whomever. And her pop used to uh, take them to a cafe to eat, and he'd always get them a little Black Forest Gato as pudding because Jill is so damn country, y'all, that mm -hmm. she still call it pudding, <laughs> which I love. Love it too. That's, that's my girl. She's going for a three-tiered black cocoa sponge filled with cherry and mascarpone filling. The middle tier is going to be covered in a shag carpet buttercream decoration situation. Man. This is, just a, this is a black forest. Uh, she's making the black forest gato. She, it's named uh, Jeff's Cake because whatever. But it's black. It's, a, it's one of two black forest gatos. Three if you count the uh, black forest gato flavored croquem boost that Chris, uh, Christian did earlier in the show that you'll have this uh, episode. And uh, I, I dig it. But and she's talking about it, and they're talking about how the colors are going to be whack. And she's like, "Yeah, it's an absolutely gulping cake." And I'm like, "The fuck!" Right, right. So I had to go look up gulp, and to yeah. gulp is to stare openly in a stupid or rude manner. Oh, so Jill's gateau is meant to look stupid, and it's like I I'm so glad that she chose to do a shag carpet piping because it's just so seventies. Very cool. She might should have made a van. <laughs> That's oh, an American 70s. Lava lamp. <laughs> oh, God. Right. Uh, Georgia, I'm going for again, Black Forest Gateau, vintage Black Forest 70s Gateau. Two series of chocolate genoa soaked in kirsch, filled with marshmallow cream and cherry jam, decorated with vintage buttercream pipework. Dylan, mint chocolate 70s Gateau, four, four people, tears of chocolate sponge filled and coated with peppermint buttercream. I am all right with this. 
I like milk I, chocolate. Me too. And I just recently on the internet found out that people think it's disgusting. And then when Paul described it that way, he was like, so basically it's like going to be a chocolate covered in toothpaste. I'm like, oh, that's why I don't think it's nasty because I enjoy the taste of toothpaste, but I guess I'm just a mint person. Again, I'm, I I think it is very lovely. So I'm just going to, you don't have to like keep y'all moving. I'm like, you be a hater. I would take it down. <laughs> I think it's too much. Yeah. Like four tiers. I think yeah. a single one of those tiers be a lovely, you know what I'm saying? You need a slice too. Right. But after that, <laughs> right. Like that's far. I've had enough, sir. Right. <laughs> Put the mint down. <laughs> down, baby. <laughs> Back uh, away from the mint. For real, for real. Jeez Louise. But hey, look. Anyway. Yeah. As he as he's up front, why don't we just go ahead and get to the judging? Sure. Dil Dylan's up top. Very impressive. Extremely 70s. Unfortunately for Paul. The peppermint dominates. His chocolate cake is described as beautifully smooth and has an elegant flavor, but the peppermint overwhelms it. Much I think he needed to use that. spearmint. I don't like spearmint to me has a sweetness to it that I don't appreciate. Oh, okay. In my mint situation. I feel like it's gentler. I get that. I, I can pick up on that. Uh the textures are spot on. It's a great looking cake. Ticked all the boxes. Well done. I'm saying you do that. And you get a handshake, you come in the middle of the table in technical. Seems to me, when we get to George's cake, hideous, isn't it? This is all in a good in the best way, people. Don't take mm -hmm. that as a this. Mm -hmm. Beautifully done. It's 70s to a T. Nice piping work, a great demonstration of George's piping skills, great flavor, lovely sponge, very boozy. It's because it was on the third watch, and I'm not joking. The third watch, and I'm concentrating a little more. I'm like, okay. They seem to not like the flavor uh, when I when I initially watched it, but now in the store, I'm like, oh, they fuck with it. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why it went like it went. Yeah. <laughs> Christian, they like the design. Fairy 70s. Pipe works a bit flawed. Too boozy. Does not work. The flavor is too strong. Genoa is meant to be light and soft, and you stuffed it full of hazelnuts. Again. I don't know that I would want to bite into a cake full of nuts. Unexpectedly. A whole nuts. Unexpectedly. Yeah. <laughs> when you go into, like I said, you go into this, it's supposed to be a Gen Y. It's supposed to be a, a relatively almost angel food-esque, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And you go into that, you crack in, like, what the? This is what not. the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. And he said, uh, Paul said something like, I, I, at some point in this episode, I expect Christian to challenge us with his yeah. flavors, yeah. but he did. It was just something about it that wasn't hidden for him. Exactly. Uh, it's just everything's thrown off. The texture of uh, when you're expecting, you know, Gen Y and you get this just throws everything off. Uh, whilst in the fridge, oh God, cooling out, waiting, Eileen's uh, showstopper uh, fell over itself. The top it just fell off. The top fell off. Just so weird to me because it's full of dowels. She put, made a point mm -hmm. to structure, but then I guess I, I I I get why after the fact. But I'm just like, Paul said something about the way that it was baked. Something he said that made I noticed it on my third watch too. It made total sense. Like the reason because I was so mad that she went home because they absolutely loved her cake, the flavors in it, whatever. And yeah, she didn't do too great in the technical and the signature. Once again, it was kind of a a structural issue and not like a baking issue. Yeah, and I, yeah. I wish I could remember what he said, but the way he explained it is it was for her fault that it fell over. It was something in the way that she made the cake that made it like super dense or whatever. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. I can see how they fault her for that because there have been times when somebody fucking ate it in the showstopper, but their thing was so good that somebody else had to go. And I just, I felt so bad for her because she was just, and my girl, she held it together. I know she wanted to cry. She did not cry. Yeah, like yeah. I just, she was just like, I, I hate that this is what I have to present to y'all, but this is what I have. But, but like she, she says she's having a wobbly week and they, and they just kind of giggle it off and they try to eat it. Prue takes a bite and says it tastes like heaven. The acidity of the peach is perfect. Paul, it's a celebration of the 10 peaks. You know, Paul don't like the, just just what the last week or week before it was like 10 peaks. You got to know what you're doing with them. And clearly, Ilian does. 
it's delicious. The champagne gives it a bit of a lift. The sponges, but the spo- here's the problem: the sponge is dense. That's it's not it. supposed to be, but yeah. the flavor is excellent. It's good color. Uh, that's a good color combination. Very seventies. It's a shame what happened structurally. I'm like, is it a ring or do we got some kind of score situation? We are so close, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Five. Um, and it tastes great. So, I mean, damn, damn shame. Jill, the whole thing is really a show. I didn't actually where you show stop by all these, uh, this output. Sure. For what I, it was. Yeah. Yeah. More show stop this week for me by the signature. I like Crook and Bush. So, uh, the, they, they really like the chad carpet. Very chocolatey, delicious, open texture and light. The cherries are a stroke of genius as they are an explosion of flavor. Took them right back to the 70s. Jill, Jill, Jill made up for that <laughs> once again, lackluster technical. The only person who was actually alive in the 70s left in the tent showed up. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Your star baker this week is in Georgia, and I am okay with it after a third watch. I was yeah. not okay with it until today when I was writing notes. I was like, all right, I get the point. Yeah. But, I think this is the one time that the technical challenge actually counted because probably her and Dylan were neck and neck, and they had to look, and she knocked that technical out of the park. Sent home, of course, he's Ilyin. Of course, you know, we always root for everybody black on this particular show. No disrespect. Yeah, man. But it just is what it is, and I hate that she had to go home. I uh, knew she, as soon as Allison was announcing who was going home that it was her. I, I was like, oh, at least they're letting Allison tell her. Bring the bad news, yes. Yeah. Uh, I am. I was watching the uh, extra slice uh, just as, as I was doing coming into this episode tonight. I just got to part where she came out, and she looked great. She's having a good time. Got to see Paul again. It's just a... She, I like Gillian. Made Me it to too. the quarterfinals, put some respect on it, and I, I, and I dig it. So I will miss I'm her. Sad to see her go. I, I, you know, at this point, like they said, a good baker will go home every week. I don't feel like it was her time. I think she just had one of them weeks that, unfortunately, she had that week at a very critical time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And she kept saying it. She's like, look, you know what I'm saying? Fourth and second go when this AP would have said. Not right, too bad. Fourth right. one is five is a problem. So right. she, she knew it, she understood it, and she accepted it. So, yeah. so did a real good job, and, and they sent her on the way. Y'all, did we talk about? We talked about it, but didn't we talk about it. Allison at one point in this episode? <laughs> she did that fan kick. <laughs> sitting sitting on the countertop, <laughs> does a little this little fan kick, and ends up rolling her ass right <laughs> off this counter. And I mean. That's a like a three foot, three foot. Yeah. Baby, a little bit more. The best part, the best part is she was just like skipping around the tent, like, I'm about to bring a little fun up in here. And then she was like, let me get up on here. And then she got up, was going to do it again. And Noah was like, I wouldn't do that again. No, no, no. <laughs> she falls right. And she's like, don't come over here. Leave me to my shame. <laughs> Laid on top of her, because <laughs> she, she got up and hopped back on the thing like she was gonna do it again. He was like, "Please don't do it again." And so, in the background is Georgie, just no Dylan, just baking. Everyone else in the tent has like Eileen came over first. Everybody kind of came over. Dylan was like, "I don't know who died. But I'm <laughs> trying to win this challenge." <laughs> I'm fully focused, man. My money on my mind. I got to do this. <laughs> and she gonna hop up off the thing, limping, talking about, "Oh, I'll just do it tomorrow." Like I, I know she was sore the next day. <laughs> Had to go hit up the chemist, get her some whatever they call uh, ibuprofen over there. Got to <laughs> That's up. the funniest thing I've <laughs> ever seen on that show. I'm sorry. Oh my god! I was hollering because I saw it on TikTok and it was fucking hilarious. In context, it was even funnier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, that was the episode. Y'all know the deal. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show wherever you can. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to get this YouTube popping. You know what I'm saying? It'd be real great if it was in your fleet you talking about, hey man, something you might get down with mm-hmm. this show. Uh, <laughs> and I think you'd appreciate it. Plus, like I said, we had a lot of video this week. And so I'm telling you right now, you might get down with the get down. 
uh, you can hit us up at podcast at stagehuntingmilk.com or 216-264-6311. That's 216-264-6311. We'd certainly love to hear from you and hear from you. We have, uh, let's see, uh, from Spotify directly. So on the episodes of the podcast, we have a comment on uh, Autumn Week episode. It's from Queen Melmindy. I just <laughs> I judge sweet potato pie recipes based on if they, as my mom would say, beat the strings out. When mixing, my mom would periodically rinse the beater so the strings it, it collected wouldn't stay in the mix. Like you mentioned, straining slash si uh, sieving it would probably work too. Thank you for that. Uh, Brad left a little comment on uh, uh, the last week's episode and said, great show. Hi, Victoria. Love me some Brad. Uh, let me tell y'all, just in case, like I said, I, I know I keep going on about the extra slice, but like I said, that's what uh, Frank's email, Frank who emailed us uh, actually is about. I want to tell you, the only, only extra slice, I mean, guess what? Guess what else I got? I got a little bit of Ted Lasso because Sassy was on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sassy's on this episode, Paul in the building. Nice. I was like, I'm about to watch all this. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish it up after we get here, but uh, we got an email from uh, Frank. We got several emails from Frank. Frank said, like I said, sent a couple articles. He sent an article about the uh, Christmas bake American baking show, and he also sent an article on the Prue article that we will probably do next week. Uh, but this one is about the extra slice, the latest episode, latest episode of the extra slice. Hey, all just to give an extra shout out to the extra slice, and people should check it out if they can access it. When they did the montage of Ilian, it reminded me she started out stronger than I remembered. She mm -hmm. was the first one to receive a handshake and did mm -hmm. have a lot and did have a lot of good base, but such a deep group, it would be easy to forget how talented she actually is. I would have forgotten all that if not for the the follow up on show, if not for the follow up show. She said some amazing things. She basically talked about what a godsend being on the show was. She said she's pl she's spent plenty of years being a super mom and not thinking about her own needs. Being on the show allowed her to stop and just do something for herself. Also, Paul was a guest on the show and was very Paul. By the way, I didn't realize there was a Spanish version and an Italian version of Bake of the Bake Off show. Which they they show they showed Paul like, hey, here's your Spanish counterpart and here is your Italian counterpart, both just handsome gentlemen who judge baking. So I was like, I was like, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. What's also dope? Ilian tells a story on the extra slice. She says, look, we don't do too much interacting with the judge, but at one point I'm in the loo with Prue, and we and we both sitting there washing our hands, and Prue turns to me and says, I read your book, it's very interesting. And they like, hold on, you got a book? And of okay. course, because if you don't remember, and maybe you don't remember, because it's, it's way back at the top. I, I told y'all she was she does uh like not midwifery, but uh, but you know, helping uh, people birth babies, and that's what the book is about. The book is literally about uh difficult uh pregnancies and birthing and so forth. Yeah, but now nah, here actually, if I roll back up to the top here to my notes, I think I have her job. Yeah. Birth trauma specialist midwife from oh. Norfolk. So she okay. does all that and has, and like I said, has a, has a pu published in 2020, so she said. And I dig the pro snagged her book and, and, it's, and was reading it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh, <laughs> I know we say it all the time. And maybe you're sick of hearing it, but maybe you, like me, love this show because mm -hmm. I truly do. It's really a delight. And I really enjoy what they what they do and how they do it. And so that's pretty cool that, they, that she got that kind of props. Just in a, in a potty situation. Right. <laughs> I like what you're doing. So that was up. Uh, next week, it's the semifinals uh, that has happened this very night. And I might, I might just watch that tonight because uh, <laughs> you're going to be I up can't. after this Cavs game, regardless of how that goes. So yeah. you might as well. Indeed. Uh, shout out to, uh, I can't, why can I remember his name? Anyway, the coach of the, the excuse me, manager. They don't do coaching in baseball. Stephen Vogt. Stephen Vogt. Stephen Vogt. Stephen Vogt. Of the uh, Cleveland Gardens, who was voted American League uh, Manager of the Year, former Oakland Athletic Stephen Vogt. No way. Yeah, that's why I, I like him. I love that link up. It's it's, it's why it feels natural for me to gravitate and jump onto y'all bandwagon as a baseball fan. It just feels and like I. Not that I'm gonna be a Cavs fan, but watching an East Coast team is so much easier on my 46 year old body because after this game, I can go to bed. For Respect baseball, y'all game don't start at 10:30 all the time. <laughs> <laughs> only sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes, and it's yeah. only when we out there visiting, y'all. Right. So. 
I just dig it. I, I guess that was the get down. But there you go, people. We did that. We did it. That's Nick Jew. Uh, I am Tay Real. Yeah. Our missing man is uh the two six zone Tatum. I don't know if they, when Ant's gonna come back. Well, when we figure, we figure it out, we'll figure it out. If you don't get no Ant this season, I warned you at the beginning. <laughs> sorry for all the Anthony fans. I know. I'm so. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not Idris Elba. <laughs> But please, bake with us again next time. Peace. What happened to your ass? It used to be beautiful.